Many would argue, as I have, that Detroit is the quintessential city of the 20th century. It was born um, really out of um, small-scale manufacturing businesses that evolved here in the late 19th century, and then they were brought together by these emerging new companies, particularly through Ford. And by 1910, by the beginning, and the, in fact, the end of the First World War, this was an automotive manufacturing center with all the businesses that go with it. The adventure began in 1900. This pensive looking man on his far-fetched contraption is Henry Ford. He's preparing the first industrial revolution of the 20th century. Ford will change the world market with the invention of the assembly line and the first example of mass production, the famous Model T Ford. industrial site, a vestige of the short-lived French colonization, was the biggest in the country. It could hold up to 90,000 workers. Between 1910 and 1930, Detroit grew to become the fourth largest town in the country, before the crisis of 29. Detroit has been in a state of decline in, in some fashion or another, going back to the 1930s, if you will. I mean, we never fully recovered from the Depression. You can go, there are vacant buildings, vacant warehouses in this city that have been empty since the, the, the Depression. The stock exchange crash also resulted in the reduction of the number of car manufacturers. From 18 manufacturers and after bankruptcies, mergers and acquisitions, only three were left. General Motors, Ford and Chrysler, who became known as the Three Giants. It was a golden era of full employment for a triumphant America. In the 50s and 60s, Detroit was a place to be. My dad talked about coming in here and walking down Woodward Avenue, and outside every bar, there was a job recruiter with, on a, with a folding table taking applications for the factories. That's how competitive it was. He hopped from job to job. It was so competitive. During that golden age, Detroit was rebaptized Motor City. The population expanded as 200,000 more citizens, mostly African-Americans, arrived, fleeing the destitution of the agricultural South. When I arrived here in the mid-50s, the population was 2 million, but they were already building freeways to go to the suburbs. That created depopulation, disinvestment, and all that sort of thing. They helped to destroy the city. It was also a time of difficult race relations in America. Many white people dreaded the so-called black invasion, as some refer to it. Subsequently, the whites began to move further out, taking with them their tax contributions and their businesses. The town soon spread over 300 square kilometers. Detroit became, in the mid-50s, a city where the population was overwhelmingly becoming overwhelming black. And the city was, at that time, still run by whites, the city government, the schools. And that led to a, uh, a black power movement. And what the, the idea, I think, that blacks had at the time was that if we would have blacks in charge in accordance with the democratic procedures, that things would get better. But social divisions added to economic problems complicated matters. To reduce the costs of production and stop depending on the powerful automobile unions, the big three changed their strategy. The automobile companies were grounded here, but as they grew and they became multinational companies with in, in increasing interests not only in manufacturing overseas, but eventually, as today, selling overseas, um, the, although we are still the headquartered, uh, we, we are still the home of the headquarters, a lot of the activities moved offshore. The change, though, brought with it the beginning of decline. Detroit lost 200,000 inhabitants between 1950 and 1960. Later in, in July Detroit, 1967, five, racial days. conflicts ignited the city. Detroit was the scene of some of the worst rioting in American history. Between the destruction and random gunfire, the National Guard was called in as reinforcement. In five days of rioting, 43 people were killed, and in more than 300 cases of arson, dozens of businesses were looted or destroyed.
Detroit's real modern decline has, uh, is, is directly tied to the deterioration of the domestic auto industry. As Ford, GM, and Chrysler began crumbling, began collapsing, you had automakers come in here with products that, that with really niche market products, but very effective niche market products, small cars. Detroit didn't do them very well. Those Japanese car makers did them very well. Luxury cars. Detroit sort of lost its luxury edge. The German car makers really excelled at luxuries. And the per vehicle cost for the big three was so much higher than that of their competitors that they couldn't price as well as perhaps they should have. It really accelerated the, the decline of Detroit. But there were so many other factors. The development of the suburbs drained the city, and racial troubles drained the city, and, and bad policies and high taxes drained the city. 